intro? Mm -hmm. Why is your seat? Can you move your seat straight? Why are you making that face? Five, four, three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Fun to Dunce. Today we are, uh, we study 1 Corinthians chapter number 17. So let's get started. All right. So I hope this was like a familiar chapter to you. I feel like we've done this before with Fun with the Dunce. We've probably done a lot of this stuff yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and also Chronicles is also in Samuel. And so you probably have read it. Um, but what basically what's happening is David looks around and he's looking at his nice house made of the expensive good wood, cedar wood. And he's like, hold on, why am I living in this nice house? And my God that I give all my worship to is still in like this temporary tent, basically a movable tabernacle. And he tells his friend Nathan, who's also like his counselor, his go-to. Remember, Nathan's the one that's been with him, and he's been the one that um, has just been a good friend to him and a good guide. Remember, he's the one that's like, let me tell you a story about David. <laughs> I think we've talked about that. And he, he, is, he knows David so well, and he knows how to guide him and steer him and help David follow along with God's plans. And so he tells David, I am convicted of this. Oh my goodness. I'm going to build God a house. And David's like, okay, that's a cool plan. But then that night David goes to sleep and God comes to him in his sleep and tells him that, Hey, that's not the plan that I have for David. Please let him know that I have a very good and specific plan for David, but it's not for him to build my house. In fact, his son, who's going to be the king next, will be the one to build my house. But not only that, um, I'm going to bless his sons and all of his family for generations to come. And they will never leave the throne is basically what is told to David. So that's a huge deal. Um, and that is a prophecy right there. Mm -hmm. And David doesn't know how that will be fulfilled, like all the prophecy. We know on the other side, because they're probably thinking just kings, like earthly thrones. But what we know is that Jesus comes, and when he comes to earth to be born, he is part of David's line. And that's what God meant. He was going to send the Messiah. So, spoiler alert if you haven't read that. But he was going to send the Messiah through David's family. But in this chapter, God tells Nathan that. Nathan, the next day, tells David everything that God told him, and David's mind is blown. He's like, oh my goodness, kind of a who am I that God would love me that much and would, you know, choose this for my life and, and make that promise to me. So, he ends this chapter with prayer and with thanksgiving. Jax, we'll start with you and your takeaway on this chapter. Okay, so in this chapter, we see uh, David's plan um, <laughs> to... Bless you, or whatever. Um, we see David's plan to build God's temple, um, and he has really good intentions with this plan, but God tells him, no, that's not in God's plans. And so this is really applicable to our lives because um, a lot of times we have plans and we have like these big dreams and ambitions for ourselves, but um, uh, they can even have like really good intentions, but... If they're not in accordance with what God has in his will for us, then um, that's not what's going to happen. Um, and I saw this thing one time. It's like, uh, God spoiled your plans, so your plans don't spoil you. Um, Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, so God, he, has, he sees everything in the full picture. He sees the full spectrum of everything. And uh, his plan is ultimately greater than ours um, and infinitely better. So, like, trust him. Love it. My main takeaway comes from that same idea. But first, I want to go back and I want to look at this cool relationship between Nathan and David. David, they, they are accountability to each other. Nathan may be a little more accountability to David, but David's the one with the power now. He's the king. And I love that God gives us people in our lives that help steer us and help us be good followers of the way. Um... And so their relationship, first of all, I think it's a big deal that David accepted what he said. Because, you know, he had an idea. He could have been excited. He could have ignored Nathan. But he was like, you know what? You've steered me well in the past. We've walked this road together for a while. You're right. 
you know, I trust that what God told you is what he told you. And so that makes me think, who do we surround ourselves with? Who, who's your Nathan in your life? Do you have people in your life that, um, you know, are God's best friend and that you could go to for wisdom and wise counsel the way that David did? So that was a cool relationship. Another thing that stands out to me is God's plan. Um, it's really important for us to remember that every one of us has our own personal relationship with God. And that, like, is mind-blowing at some point, at every point, that our God would want a personal relationship, that he would know us individually, that he knew us before he put us in our mama's tummy to be born. <laughs> I'm getting elbowed. That he knows exactly how many hairs are on our heads because... The boys know that that's a big deal. I shed so much. Okay. Like, it's constantly changing. This is important information. <laughs> but for real, intent. our God wants a personal relationship with all of us. But not only that, God has a personal and an individual plan for each of us. And so what I see here is when God comes to Nathan in his dream, he goes back. It's not just like, tell David, no, he... I don't know why God has that accent. <laughs> Like, he doesn't say, tell David no. He doesn't get to do that. I have another plan. But it's a response in love. And not only love, but he goes back and he talks about the relationship he has with David. That it's personal. He loves him. That remember what what's happened with me and David. And not only what has happened, but like he has a future plan for David. That's better than David could have ever imagined. And so... God's response here is really cool, and it's also showing us that that's not his plan for David, but that's his plan for David's son. And so God has a specific personal plan for David, a specific personal plan for Solomon, a specific personal plan for all of us, for you too. Um, and then I like that David accepted this correction to what he was thinking. I, I like that he didn't take it personally. And I like that he didn't compare himself to other followers. He didn't compare God's plan. But the my very favorite takeaway, I know I cheated this time, is that God is so good. So here we start this chapter with David wanting to do something. And I feel like that's out of the overflow of his worship and his love for the Lord. Hold on. God deserves better. Let me honor him. Let me do this for him in worship and in offering to him. And so it starts with David emptying himself, humbling himself, coming to God. But it ends with God flipping the, tur the table, turning the table, flipping the table, and honoring David. And not only was he like, David, you're not going to do this for me. I have a different plan for you. Um, not only am I going to take away the plan that you made for yourself, but I'm going to give back even better than what you could ask or imagine. I can't, I put it in my Bible. I can't help but think of Ephesians 3.20. David goes to God wanting to do something for him and God turns around and blesses him immeasurably, makes a covenant with David, makes a promise saying that you will be, someone from your family will be on the throne forever and ever. God tells David in this chapter that the Messiah is going to come from his line. David doesn't know that today in chapter 17. But that's what's going to happen. And I'm like, hold on. Only our God would be that good. Only our God would take this, this offering and make it into a blessing for David. That's beautiful. And that's so good of him. That's better than good. I, I'm running out of adjectives. But th that's our God, y'all. He loves us in that way. And I can't help but think, I'm so glad David trusts him. And I hope that when I go to him with my plans and he corrects me and he changes it, that I can think of this and I can remember that God's plan for me is better than anything I could imagine. All right, friends, thank you for joining us today. We'll see you guys tomorrow in chapter 18. Bye. Bye. Why are you laughing at me?